Welcome to the Bilingual Open Stream Podcast. Herzlich willkommen, mein Name ist Nico Weiser und ich bin Gründer von der Web- und E-Commerce-Agentur OpenStream in Zürich. In unserem Podcast präsentieren wir euch ausgewählte Referate von internationalen Fachkonferenzen auf Englisch und Deutsch. Unser Podcast richtet sich an alle, die sich für offene Webtechnologien und Online-Marketing interessieren. Jede Folge kommt außerdem mit einem kostenlosen Transkript daher. I wish I could bottle the energy that this community generates. The incredible Magento community. So the theme of this talk, of course, is what's going on inside Magento. The OpenStream podcast is directed towards developers and users. Every episode includes a free transcript. We have a strong focus on e-commerce with Magento and WooCommerce, but we also build regular websites for small and medium-sized companies with WordPress, a very user and developer friendly content management system. If you have any questions or feedback, please write us at podcast at openstream.ch. If you enjoy listening to this podcast, please recommend it to your friends. It's available on Apple, Google, and Spotify podcast, as well as on our website. If you subscribe to the OpenStream newsletter, you'll also be notified about new episodes. Open source is, for me, the most important idea I've been exposed to in my lifetime, actually. So, you have your beautiful WordPress website. You have taken care of everything that needs to be taken care of. So, the Magento community is a quirky group of intelligent innovators who thrive on collaboration. We're innovators, and innovators are lifelong learners. This episode's presentation was given by Nicholas Contopoulos in November 2020 at Meet Magento Singapore. He's head of marketing at Adobe for the Asia Pacific region and he's very passionate about innovative thinking. So let's hear from him personally about how to differentiate your brand in a market full of clones. Thank you very much for that very uh, wonderful uh, introduction, and I'm I'm super excited to be here today to uh, definitely share some insights on what hopefully will be an engaging topic. Um, so yeah, really really looking forward to today's session. As usual, it will be pretty fast paced, so hopefully you can buckle up and keep uh, pace with me. As introduced, you know I've got the the great privilege of heading up uh, Adobe DX marketing for the commercial business. Uh, which incorporates the Magento uh, brand and and also the Marketo brands that were acquired by Adobe several years back. You know, we're very passionate about commerce and I still remain very passionate about commerce and really excited about, you know, the great inroads we're making into this region. And some of the, what I'm going to share today is definitely based on my own personal experience. And one thing you'll see a lot of is a lot of passion. Those that know me know I'm very passionate about this topic. But I'm not just passionate about my work. I'm passionate about my family. As you again, you know, know that these are everything we do each and every day. You know, ultimately is uh, revolves around hopefully providing for our family and loved ones. Um, but as an Aussie, again, those that know me, I'm very passionate about my sports. You know, follow the rugby. Uh, but when we're losing, that's when I would tend to revert back to my Greek heritage. And a lot of what I'm going to share today is also based on my own experiences, uh, having travelled. Uh, across this you know, little blue marble that we call Earth. I've been to about 65 countries now. I've had the great privilege of working with a number of brands, um, great brands, both as, a, as an employee, but also as a partner and as a customer. And during that uh, experience, I've gathered a lot of insights uh, that I'm gonna want, you know, they've found their way into the talk today. Um, and one thing that does fascinate me without a doubt is people. People really do fascinate me and, and I'm really, uh, also passionate about custom experience. It's a topic I've been deeply involved in for those that aren't familiar with me for about you know, coming up to nearly two decades now. It's something I've been you know, exploring and, and trying to understand 
how we can improve customer experiences uh, for B2B and B2C brands. So what I'm talking about today is equally relevant to B2B brands. Those of you that are dialing in that are, represent a B2B brand, this is very much a relevant talk for you as well. I'm also very seriously passionate about my customers, but not just my customers, their customers as well. And I think we have to be, you know, we need to invest in, in being that passionate about not just about our immediate customers, but also the customers they're trying to serve. And we ultimately obviously want them to succeed. Yeah, in order to do that, they really do need to understand how customer experiences are created and ultimately delivered and ultimately lived and breathed through their organizations. And this is the challenge for us today because really um, standing out you know, from all the noise is, is becoming increasingly more and more difficult. Think about it, you know, there is, uh, you know, it's, it's, there is so many people out there saying the same thing, yeah? using the same type of messaging, using the same type of ads, you're all creative. There's so many people out there just doing the same thing. So many people jumping on the same technology bandwagons and this is creating a lot of challenges for us. This video is a video I've shown before. Look at and this. I really love it because I do think it There's crystallizes. There's a Zephoria on that spawn right there, so the everyone's car. running. Most of you recognize that video um, as being obviously Pokemon Go, and that was New York uh, uh, Central Park about three or four years ago when uh, when Pokemon uh, Go uh, exploded on the scene. And this is something that we, we continue to see is that technology is really changing everything not just for us as business leaders or, or, or practitioners, but also as consumers. We know that it's changing our behaviors. I mean, that was a fantastic example of just how an app, you know, transformed behaviors across the globe. Yeah, I mean, whether you were in Singapore, in Mumbai, in Shanghai or New York, we saw a similar behavioral change taking place here. And technology is really driving a rapid change in how we as consumers engage with brands. You know, this is con this contents from uh, Australia, um, but there's similar stats for all over the region. Yeah, you know, we look at how consumers are engaging with content and and the types of channels and platforms they're using, and we're seeing fundamental changes and the amount of time they're spending. Again, you know, this is a data point from Australia. This, uh, if I look at a data point for Singapore or Thailand. Is a similar, if not higher number. In actual fact, it is a higher number. So we're spending more time each and every day, whether it's traveling to and from work when we were able to do that, or even when we're now working from home, we're obviously sitting in front of our devices for much longer periods of time. I mean, Statista's, this data point came from Statista in 2019. 65% of the population they estimated by 2021 would be digital digital, but let's be real. I mean, this year, what, what we'll have seen is that data point increase exponentially without a doubt, 100% across the globe. Uh, Simon Kemp, if you're not familiar with his work, although I'm sure you are, if not, you've most probably been exposed to it in one way, shape or form. Uh, he produces fantastic insights on a regular basis. You know, he does this digital 2020 global uh, overview. And we recently engaged with him or a little while back, we engaged with him and looked at, you know, data in, in respect to COVID-19 and the impact that was having. And what was really interesting and not, not really surprising, um, but interesting to see was that people were obviously spending more time with their devices. And what was particularly of interest is when you start looking at the demographics. So actually the you know, Gen Xs and, and the baby boomers, you know, maybe those generations where there had been some latency or you know, hesitation in, in fully leaping into the digital world uh, were actually forced into that. If I even look at my own mum, you know, she's definitely fully digital now. Yeah, she does everything digitally, buying a, a grandchildren, uh, you know, on presence online. But even in a B2B context, you know, those that were maybe not, you know, relying on salespeople coming and visiting them have had to be forced to, to do more research online. So we're seeing a fundamental shift here. And that's obviously trend uh, cascading into e commerce. I think McKinsey uh, put a data point out that what we've seen this year in terms of e commerce growth represents the amount of growth that's uh, taken place over the last 10 years. So just in 2 and 20, we've seen almost the same amount of growth take place over a 10-year period. So there's a fantastic uh, opportunity for all of us to really reimagine how we're engaging our customers. But I, I really want to stress here that 
this isn't just a B2B, a B2C story. This is equally important for B2B brands because the reality is B2B, B2C customers are really evolving how they're making their purchasing decisions. I've said this before in many of my talks where they're no longer following, following this linear process. They're very much twisting and turning through the buying process, going back and steps and going forward two steps that we maybe didn't anticipate um, in consulting with different sources, et cetera. And, and this is really putting a lot of pressure on businesses. And equally, as I said, for B2B brands, this is uh, becoming an absolute expectation now um, when we look at the data points for uh, B2B uh, purchases in that they want a similar consumer grade experience being delivered to them. And as you will have heard me reference before, this idea of digital tar Darwinism, which was coined by Brian Solis, really is at play uh, dramatically in our, you know, it, and accelerating um, you know, in terms of the way society and consumers are evolving is putting a lot of pressure on us. And a lot of executives now are trying to play catch up. You know, a lot of businesses are that maybe hadn't really doubled down in driving this digital transformation uh, to, you know, custom experience transformation and marrying their digital and um, physical worlds together are really running uh, so the gauntlet now. Now here's, you know, you, Here's the, here's the trick, yeah, I mean, how do you go and create an amazing customer experience that doesn't look and feel like everyone else's? Now that's the real challenge, yeah? You know, obviously we can go, we've got marketplaces, there's a great, there's a lot of e-commerce solutions out there that you can, you know, you know, deploy that, you know, provide a, you know, great service, but come in a very vanilla flavor, yeah? So we need to think about how do we architect our physical and digital channels in a way that enable us to deliver a really differentiated service that doesn't look like everyone else's site, that isn't, isn't beige. And that's the real trick. That's the real challenge for each and every one of us today. And here's another uh, interesting data point. You know, the fact is what consumers are looking for is wanting a more personalized and individualized experience. And, and they're getting frustrated, you know, with the lack of that experience being delivered. And, and what, what's amazing and truly amazing is if you can get this right, and we see this with our customers that are really doubling down on this, and I'll come to a couple later, 91% of consumers are willing to spend more, inf uh, more money with you if you are able to deliver them um, products and services that are really tailored to what they're looking for. You know, they're being able to recommend products that solve or services that solve their problems is really important. And even more importantly, 83% of them are willing to share more data with you, more data with you if you can use that data as smartly in a way that really does help them discover those solutions, you know, helps them discover uh, the, the, the insights that are needed for them to be able to make an informed decision and not have buyer's remorse at the end of the purchasing cycle. And here's the, but here's a challenge for them, yeah? I mean, you think about each and every day, I wake up just from a B2B context, I have over a hundred emails in my inbox of marketers who have tried to spam me and try to get me capture my attention. There's so much information coming at me just in a B2B context. Then I layer that on the B2C and it's just overwhelming sometimes. I'm sure you all feel that. Sometimes you just go, oh my God, there's so many choices here. So this is where as marketers, as business leaders, as commerce professionals, we need to be thinking about how do we make that purchasing decision easier for the consumer? How do we make it easier for them to make that informed decision as I mentioned earlier? So this means stop. we've got to stop shouting at our customers. We've got to stop broadcasting to them. We've got to start thinking about them, really putting them at the heart of the journey. We need to think about how do we go from this idea of personalization, which is basically table stakes now, yeah? We need to be thinking now the next goal is to go to this world of, or this capability of individualization. How do I individualize that experience for Nicholas? How do I individualize that experience? And to do that is requires me to really, you know, be able to craft a, a clear understanding of, well, first and foremost, what is our why? Now I touched on this in, uh, last, in last year's, uh, keynote, and I'm going to bring it back onto the table today, just very briefly, because it really is important. You know, I want to bring this message back into this talk today, because in order to stand out from what, all the clones, we need to have a very clear purpose. We need to really develop and shape a purpose for those that aren't familiar with this concept or who remember this from last year. I really want to challenge you to double down on this, really think about making sure that you guys are very clear on what is your company's purpose? What are you trying to achieve as a goal? And then how do you create a utility capability that enables you to differentiate the brand? Now, when I think, when I say brand purpose, I'm not saying go save the world, yeah? Purpose really is your why. As Simon Sinek, people buy your why, yeah? And really understanding and defining that, having that at the heart of your strategy is absolutely critical. 
and really then building and shaping um, your web of promises, understanding how those promises have been created across your organization and how you keep those promises are really going to be quite central to your ability to anchor that purpose and ultimately to create um, a, a service that is ultimately memorable. And this is where utility becomes really important. Remember the data points I'm talking about in terms of personalization, the willingness of brand uh, consumers and B2B buyers to share data with you. If you can take that data and create a service oriented engagement experience end to end, and you use that to inform your content creation and use it to inform the way you are, your sellers will engage a prospect, right? the way your contact staff will ultimately engage you know, someone who's calling in with a service issue or who's calling in wanting to learn more about your product is ultimately going to help you significantly stand out from the from the uh, the clones, yeah, from, from the rest of the competitors who are ultimately, in a lot of cases, are going to be offering, offering up generic type omni-channel experiences, yeah? To really deliver a true omni-channel experience, we really need to think about our customers through this channelist mindset and really have that anchored against a purpose, a clear purpose and a clear utility offering. And as this um, quote, you know, I really love this quote here, really greatness comes not from a position, but from helping build the future. So that's what our jobs as leaders, as agents of change is really to help drive that transformational change in the business. Culture is a really important part of this mix. We did a fantastic interview with Martin Lindstrom. I'm a massive fan of his work. If you're not familiar with him, there's a QR code here, scan it and, and go and watch his session. You know, I was, uh, I, I, I had the great fortune of hosting his session. He, he, he illuminated so many new areas for me just in that 40 minute or 50 minute session we had with him. I really encourage you because culture is really important part of a lot of what I'm saying here. I wanted to also talk to you guys about it or give you guys a case study that sort of showcased some of what I'm talking here. Now, uh, many may be familiar with uh, the Ascent Group. Uh, they own a number of retail brands in Australia, one of which is Athletes Foot. Um, they are a, a great Adobe customer of ours uh, across multiple brands. And they've created what I believe is a great example here of a end-to-end -end experience. Yeah, they've created a physical and digital experience that comes together beautifully. You can go into one of their stores, uh, you know, get a foot fitting, making sure that your shoes that are being offered to you are tailored to your specific needs. But you also can have the ability to walk out of that store, go back and do some research. Maybe I wanted to, maybe I wasn't quite sure which, which of the two recommended shoes I wanted to look at. Um, and I wanna go back and do a bit more research before I, I press that buy button or pull out my wallet. Um, and here, you know, what they've created is the ability to go back and really, you know, dive into their into the product in a more richer way to really explore, learn more about the type of shoe that they've suggested and recommended to me to make sure I'm comfortable with that purchase. But what's even more uh, amazing is I can really go in there, find, you know, the size, know the size I want to purchase, but also then, you know, do a click in store because I don't want to wait for them to ship to me. I'm actually going to be down at Bondi Beach, you know, and I know I'm going to be able to go and drop into the store there and collect the shoes. And knowing that they've got that in stock and to be able to make that engagement is a great example of brand utility for me. This is, a, you know, the physical digital channels coming together, um, my ability to really, you know, uh, learn and, and, and educate myself, but ultimately make an informed decision and then ultimately act on that, that uh, impulse when I'm ready to buy. And, and, and transact, you know, through a channel that I want to uh, engage with. So this channelist experience is a really great example for me. And Athletes Foot have done this amazing effort across multiple brands. And they've really seen this translate into some really fantastic results. What was really exciting to see, and Mark Tepperson, who was a former uh, CDO there, you know, he's now moved on, but he, he, he was, uh, you know, really played a key role in driving this transformation. And ultimately, you know, what we saw this year, even when a lot of brands were really suffering, you know, really suffering as a result of COVID-19, this company actually really was able to, 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 to chart its way through those very difficult times and actually still remain, you know, in a positive state for their business. So that was a fantastic uh, example. Another great one for me is DIY Beer uh, Coopers out of Australia as well. This is another uh, beautiful example of a brand that's really thought about creating an end-to-end -end experience for, for its uh, consumers, for its customers that are coming to the site who want to learn more about their products, who want to engage with, you know, rich content about the product kits they have to offer, you know, enable me to quickly learn more about that, but also provide me access to great resources, you know, whether it was FAQs that we saw at the start there, 
or actually the ability to tap into a community. Again, a community is a really important part of this experience, creating that and harnessing the power of the community, the advocacy of that community is a great example of how you can create really rich uh, experiences that actually differentiate yourselves from your competitors. So it's clear that customer experience is now the new competitive landscape. And I'd love to say that there's one technology that solves all your problems here, but it's not. You know, Adobe without a doubt delivers a set of core capabilities that do cater to a lot of what I've spoken to today, without a doubt, world-class technologies. But technology alone isn't going to solve your problems. You need to be thinking about your people, processes, and technologies. You always hear me say that. I will never stop saying that because I see a lot of projects still fail as a result of the lack of focus on people and process. Also, you're going to come across people who really are going to push against your transformational efforts, yeah, who don't want to get on board. And it's really important to understand who those blockers are going to be. Try to bring them on board, but also really spend time in trying to understand who the haters are going to be and try to hopefully provide solutions that turn them from haters to lovers. You know, that's again something I've seen work really well for me in the past. But let's also remember, digital transformation has never been more important uh, than, than uh, today. And we've seen that, you know, sadly, COVID-19 has really accentuated that. Um, but the good news is we've, there's a lot of learnings we can all take out of that and actually apply into our strategies going forward so that we can build a robust business like um, Ascent Group is as, as the example I gave there that can enable us to trans, uh, trans, uh, traverse the tough, tough times we see. Um, but here's the deal. You're going to have to create a culture that's willing to fail, you know, willing to fail often and fail always, but always, always fail forward. You know, we need to embrace that. We need to be comfortable with that. We need to, you know, practice what we preach if we say this to our teams. We need to be as leaders willing to also do this. Yeah, um, because only through that will we be able to, you know, uh, drive the ch change we need. Innovation requires the ability to fail, but also requires empathy. We need to really empathize, not just with our customers. That's a given. Yeah but also our employees, our partners, our suppliers. We need to understand the roles that each of these uh, people play in enabling us to drive a truly differentiated experience. Because if we don't, we ultimately end up with a, a clone-like uh, experience. And that's what we don't want. We want to move away from delivering a vanilla flavored type or beige uh, looking experience. I like vanilla, actually vanilla flavored ice cream is my favorite. So I don't know why I'll go there, but let's use beige. Yeah, we don't want to deliver a beige experience. We want to deliver something that's really rich, exciting and memorable. Um, we want to also create a signal in the noise. We want to be that brand that cuts through. Remember that image that I showed earlier with all of the information coming at us as consumers. We want to create an experience, a digital experience that really cuts through that noise and enables our uh, customers to zero in on that signal and have that signal guide them through that discovery journey all the way through to becoming ultimately, hopefully, what we, a, a, you know, a brand advocate. You know, as Obama says here beautifully, you know, change will not come if we wait for some other person. So don't wait for your bosses to figure this out. You know, we have to go out there and actually start driving that change yourselves. Um, you know, we are the ones that have been waiting. Uh, we are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that uh, we seek. You know? So we need to be that, that change. We need to embrace it, see it for what it is, and ultimately see it as a, an opportunity for us to not only change um, our organizations, but also to help drive change in ourselves that ultimately enable us to get better at what we do. So with that, I want to say thank you uh, for joining us today and on this session. And there's a wonderful lineup of speakers that we're going to hear from today. I'm really looking forward to having, you know, my brain juices fired up from all the other speakers. Um, my name is Nicholas Contopoulos. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm, there's not too many Contopolises out there, but feel free to, to reach out and connect with me on that. I'll do my best to get back to you uh, through that channel. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, enjoy the rest of today's content. Uh, I really want to thank, uh, you know, the Renaissance team and all the other sponsors that are getting behind this. It's really important that we continue as a community, as a Magento commerce community to stay connected, to learn from one another, to share from one another's experiences. And I look forward to hearing some of those insights, as I said, from the other speakers today. So I'll hand back to, to uh, the team now. Thank you very much. Warum ist E-Commerce in der Schweiz noch nicht wirklich angekommen? Warum?